Our high-risk program at Elizabeth Wendy is one of a kind. I'm lucky enough to direct the program here that services the 100,000 patients that come here annually. Every patient that enters our building fills out a high-risk questionnaire, simply taking into account three generations of your family history your aunts and uncles, parents, grandparents. If you have a family history that meets criteria for genetic testing, you are notified of your high-risk status and offered an opportunity to come in and sit and meet and talk with me. Genetic counseling is about a one-hour process where you'll sit down, we'll go over your family history point by point, and we'll determine if genetic testing is appropriate for you. If it is, we'll draw your blood the same day, and about three to four weeks later, we will sit down again to talk through your test results and how they impact your future. Two different type of women seek genetic testing. There are those who have been diagnosed previously with cancer, and there are those who are wondering their risk in the future. I believe that unaffected patients come in balancing the questions about how their family history is going to impact them. They do not have time constraints like an affected patient might, but their questions are nonetheless important. We know that individuals who are coming in because of a recent diagnosis are seeking quick answers. Genetic testing can provide results in as little as 10 to 14 days, allowing an individual to go forward with their surgical decision-making process in a quick and timely fashion. Individuals who are seeking testing because of a family history may have some guilt associated with their question because they're trying to balance supporting their loved one and thinking about their own risks. The job of a genetic counselor is not only to provide the scientific information, but also psychosocial support that allows them to make the best decision for themselves. The process of genetic counseling here at Elizabeth Wendy is relatively simple. Every patient fills out a health history form when they enter the building. Human beings actually look at those health history forms and read them. If an individual has a family history that is appropriate for genetic counseling and genetic testing, that is noted in our electronic medical record. And moving forward, that patient is identified as someone who should come in for genetic counseling and genetic testing. We have staff, while you're sitting and waiting for your mammogram results, who can talk to you about it and even schedule you an appointment. When you come to meet with me, it is going through a three-generation pedigree, personal and family history, and we also take a look at your motivation for testing. What is it that I hope to get out of this process? Of course, we talk about logistics, how long for test results, whether or not my insurance will cover it, and we even talk about things like discrimination. When we think about the process of genetic counseling, we want to make it easy and accessible for all of our patients. If you do test positive, then relatives who are at risk can also move forward by making an appointment, sitting down, and going through the same process. The genetics testing uh, for me was huge because you can see in the family how it has affected my family. It's, it's been a, a big part of my life. I've encouraged all my family members to get tested. Many of them have gotten tested. Uh, I have a family member that didn't want to get tested. And she said, you know, what is it going to do for me if I get tested? And I told her, I said, it's a gift. You know, if you find out that you're BRCA or genetic disorder, then it's a gift. They're going to screen you differently when you go for your routine mammogram. And she got tested, and a couple months later, she went in for her routine mammogram and didn't show anything. And so they saw, looked at your chart and said, you know, you're BRCA2, we should probably go ahead and do an MRI. And they did an MRI, and they found two uh, areas of breast cancer, one very aggressive. So I feel that that saved her life because I don't know how long it would have been with a um, mammogram until she would find out that she had the breast cancer. So it's, it's huge. Genetic testing has evolved over time from the mid-1990s till about 2012. Testing for breast cancer susceptibility really centered around two genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2. These are very powerful genes that we know a lot about. 
They not only increase the likelihood of breast cancer, but also of ovarian, prostate, melanoma, and pancreatic cancers. There's a whole generation of women who, when they sought genetic testing, were only tested for those two genes. And today, we're trying to educate patients that there are a host of other genes that could be the cause of cancer as well. And so any individual that was tested and tested negative for BRCA1 and BRCA2 could seek update testing, which includes a variety of additional genes. Many times when we seek medical advice or insight, the benefits of the results are just for ourselves. Genetic testing is a little bit different. When you seek this input and this advice, you're actually affecting a whole family. An individual who tests positive for a gene will actually be providing valuable information to their siblings, to their children, and to their extended family. That's one of my favorite parts of my job, which is when I get to deal with not only the individual seeking the information, but entire families coming in and being changed for the better. I'm glad that there was someone there to document and put everything on paper to see how much it does run through my family. Um, it was no surprise to me when my results came back positive. I had already had that made up in my mind that there was some reason that my mom was diagnosed so young. Um, and we went through everything. The counselor at Elizabeth Wendy um, was so supportive in my decision, like she understood how I felt and why it was so important for me to pursue um, genetic counseling and get and do something about it. That, that was the main thing that she understood that I wanted to be proactive. I was already being proactive by starting my testing, um, my mammograms and my ultrasounds at 24 that why not do this too? Why not look at everything that's to come in my future? and. The counselor at Elizabeth Wendy was right there to support my family, to support me, and um, roadmap what was to come. Every family is affected by breast cancer and some other type of cancer, so um, they really made me feel like um, part of a community here. The vast majority of people that we test end up testing negative and do not have a mutation. But for those who test positive, not only are the management guidelines different, but also their entire outlook about cancer. We have a very robust support group for individuals who have tested positive for BRCA1, BRCA2, check to ATM, a variety of different genes. We get together quarterly and offer education and support, laughs and tears. Many of our patients at the beginning of their journey do not feel as though a support group is the right environment for them and then they quickly transition to, but I have questions about surgery, I have questions about my children, I have questions about diet and nutrition, and they turn to our support group as a way to get additional information and to realize that they're not alone as they walk through this journey. Our hope in embedding genetic counseling within an imaging center was to take away the barriers to genetic testing and genetic counseling. We know that our patients are much more likely to walk upstairs and have a conversation with a group of people that they have known and trusted for decades, rather than to wait for a referral to another specialist. There are only a handful of centers around the country that have genetic counseling as part of the process, and we're very proud to be one of them.